I do feel like that fever pitch that was in all the news articles and on all the chicken groups where everybody was like really worried about bird flu, but I feel like that's starting to die down. And I'm really hoping that we're kind of coming towards the end of this. Of course, it's going out with a bang because it is right here in my county and everyone keeps asking me what I'm gonna do. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. You guys going crazy down here or what? Don't be kicking shavings into my shoes. So for pretty much all of last month and into this month, there has been a lot of concern about highly pathogenic avian influenza because it has arrived right here in my county. And there have been a few backyard flocks that have been diagnosed with this disease. And as a consequence, these flocks were destroyed. So understandably, a lot of people have been contacting me right now, especially my local listeners of my podcast and those that watch my YouTube channel. They've been contacting me and asking me, okay, well, what are you doing? I wanna know what you're doing to protect your flock because if I know what you are doing, then maybe I can feel better about what I can do for my own flock. I know that there are people that just don't even believe that bird flu is real or they believe that it's being highly exaggerated for nefarious reasons. And I, I understand that sentiment, even though I do believe that it's real. I myself am not somebody that just believes everything I hear or anything I've been told. I am by nature somebody that questions authority a lot. But in this situation, I have to look at you know, how, how can I be the most responsible as somebody that is an educator in this field during this time? I don't wanna make any claims that I can't back up. So I'm just basically looking at what is the worst case scenario? And regardless of what you think about this disease, the response to it, if it happens to you, is really awful. And that's what scares me. I don't want people to lose their whole flock. And honestly, a question often comes to my mind, like are these flocks being destroyed for the sake of backyard flocks and the future of our backyard flocks? Or is this happening for the sake of the poultry industry? <sighs> but I digress. So I've decided that I'm just gonna be really honest with all of you and tell you exactly what I'm doing with my own flock and explain why you might decide to do something different and why everybody's situation is different and how we have to kind of look critically at our own individual situation and make an educated guess from our own circumstances. And I'm gonna explain how that would work for you. So somebody's always laying an egg when I'm trying to shoot a video. <laughs> Be quiet in there. I do not suggest going against what your veterinarian is telling you to do. I will not suggest that you go against any kind of, you know, rules that are put in place by your local authorities. If they're telling you to do something very specific, you should do that. So with this situation, and really with any situation that you might confront when it comes to your flock, it's all about how much risk you're willing to absorb when you have all the facts in front of you. It is absolutely possible to bring the risk of bird flu down very low when it comes to your flock if you were to cover your runs with some impenet impenetrable material. I can't say that word very well. <laughs> with some material that nothing can get through and just really shield them from any contact with outside flocks, of course, and with um, any wildlife. You would definitely bring down your risk of contracting bird flu or your flock's risk of contracting bird flu uh, very low if you were to do that. But it's really important when you're calculating risks that you also calculate the risk that you might be introducing to your flock by implementing certain things. If you have free range chickens right now, or you have chickens that are in a big run without a cover and you move them inside into an enclosed run or into a smaller space, do you have enough space within that run for the amount of chickens that you have? Every standard size chicken in their run needs at least 10 square feet of run space. If you do less than that, then you might be running into different problems. 
They also need two to four square feet of space per standard size chicken in their coop. And, you know, I really lean towards the four square feet of space because the only reason you can kind of get away with less than that is if there are areas outside of their coop where they can completely get away from the elements. If there aren't, then you want to make sure that you have at least four square feet of space within the coop for every standard size chicken that you have. Can you offer enough enrichment in the space that you have moved them into so that your flock doesn't fall into boredom? Because when chickens get bored, they can get obsessive behaviors, they can get bullying behaviors. You really want to avoid that situation because it can just lead to all other kinds of problems that you don't wanna deal with. If you move your chickens into a smaller space, are you going to be able to keep up with cleaning that space. Because if you allow ammonia to build up, you know, if they're kind of crowded in the space that they're in and ammonia is building up, you've got a lot of uh, fecal matter building up, then you are creating a situation where they could come down with other respiratory illnesses that could possibly be prevented if they had a bigger space, if they had more ventilation. So this is something that you really have to think about before you move them into that smaller space. If you have evaluated your situation and you have realized that you can move your chickens into a smaller area and they can still have enough ventilation, you can keep up with cleaning the area, they've got enough space, they've got enough enrichment, then I don't think there is a thing wrong with deciding to do that because I mean, that's a win-win situation. Like you're going to be avoiding a problem and you're not creating more problems. I think the number one thing that you should do is practice good biosecurity. And beyond that, you just need to take really good care of your flock and support them and keep them in a balanced state. That means you want them to have good nutrition. You want them to have enough space. You want them to have things to do. And you just don't want them to be in a stressful situation because those situations can really put your flock at risk from bird flu and many other things. For right now, even though avian influenza is in my county, I don't have a lot of wild birds like flying right directly over my run. Um, so I'm not covering it yet. I'm not in a quarantine zone. If it got really close and too close for comfort, then I will confront that when it comes to me. But right now I've just decided, you know, for the sake of my own mental well-being and uh, for my flock, I'm just going to leave it open for now. But if my circumstances change, then I will evaluate those circumstances then and take the necessary precautions. I probably sound like a broken record to many of you that watch my videos and listen to my podcast, but I really think it is very important for your chickens to have a solid connection with nature. I mean, that is really where they belong. And unfortunately, that doesn't mean that they're never gonna get sick. You know, I know that I'm taking a risk. I know that it is possible for my chickens to get sick. You know, we live on this planet, we are participating in this ecosystem, and there are viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, all those things live in our environment. And they have a really important role in our environment. What I have observed throughout this whole bird flu thing is that, you know, we've kind of reached an unbalanced state and nature is telling us, hey, you know, you need to get it together. <laughs> like, you're doing things that are causing problems and creating the situation that is dangerous to all of us. So what I can do in this situation is bring as much balance as I can into my chicken yard and into my life. So I'm just trying to give my chickens lots of good nutrition, lots of space, lots of enrichment. I'm trying to keep their area clean and I'm trying to keep them as close with nature as they can be right now because that's where they're supposed to be. That is where they belong. So I'm kind of hoping that this is the last video I make about bird flu, at least for this year. You know, can it be the last one, please? Uh, if you're feeling like, you know what, I cannot get enough of these bird flu videos, I wanna watch more, <laughs> then you can click right here. It's a whole playlist about avian influenza and it's 100% friendly backyard chickens, education and entertainment. And I know you're gonna love it.